So today I want to do something in a similar style to some of my favorite retro tech YouTubers. I've seen plenty of people make long, fascinating, detailed videos in every audio and video format under the sun, but there's one I've wanted them to cover for a long time. That being one of the first truly portable video formats. Sony's UMD Video for PSP. So in 2004, Sony released their first portable game system, the PlayStation Portable, or PSP. Alongside it, they released a new media format specifically designed for the system, the UMD, or Universal Media Disc. The UMD format was similar in many ways to a previous Sony format, the Mini Disc, since both formats were similar sized discs enclosed in caddies to protect the disc from scratches. The UMD was 64mm across without its case, and could hold up to 1.8GB of data. Sony designed the format mainly for PSP games, but due to the success of MP3 players and other personal music players at the time, they wanted the PSP to be a multimedia system, the Walkman of the 21st century, which led to the release of not only games on PSP, but movies as well, dubbed UMD Video. When the PSP was released in North America in 2005, Sony offered $250 value packs, which bundled the PSP with various accessories, including a copy of Spider-Man 2 on UMD. Sony had several studios lined up to release films on the format, including Universal, Paramount, 20th Century Fox, and even Disney, on top of support from Sony's own studios. UMD Video was geared to cater towards the PSP's general target market of males under 25, so its offerings were mainly action, sci-fi, and comedy genres. And of course, it was much more portable and slightly more cost-effective than using a portable DVD player, which at the time were still expensive and weren't pocketable like the PSP. So let's take a look at some of these releases. In preparation for this video, I bought several movies on UMD, including a few of my favorites as well as some notable releases. Let's start with the PSP sampler disc. This is a collection of trailers for various games and movies, as well as some music videos. I went into this expecting the game section to have playable demos, kind of like a PS1 or PS2 demo disc, but apparently not. But I do have a demo disc here. This is the UMD release of Stealth, which was released in 2005 by Columbia Pictures. It's standard 2000s action movie flair, complete with explosions, a description that tells you absolutely nothing about the movie's plot, and a music artist in one of the lead roles. But what makes it interesting is that it also includes a demo for the game Wipeout Pure. This is the only release I'm aware of that includes a game demo, which is kind of weird. You'd think it would be a cool selling point to offer a movie that includes a demo for, say, its tie-in video game. The demo itself actually includes content exclusive to this release, mainly a ship and track themed after stealth, with about as much subtlety as you could expect from an early 2000s action film. I filmed myself playing this track and will link it in the description below. Music was offered on UMD as well, including this release here, Daft Punk's Interstellar 5555. I'm not going to go into detail about it, but it's a pretty unique anime movie that's pretty much an hour-long music video for Daft Punk's Discovery album. I bought it under the belief that it was a rarity, but apparently that's only the case in the US. Regardless, it still gives me an excuse to talk about UMD music. UMD music was a subgenre of UMD video focusing on music videos and concert recordings, rather than just the tracks and that's it. One thing I've noticed is that this labeling is very inconsistent. Sometimes music releases are labeled under UMD Video, sometimes under Music. Hell, I've seen one labeled as both. Something tells me Sony had a bit of a hands-off approach with what did and didn't fall under music. In my opinion, if the main focus of the content is music, it goes under UMD Music, but I digress. TV shows were also offered on UMD, including what I have here, the complete set of Doctor Who Series 1. Don't get me wrong, by the way, David Tennant's great, but Christopher Eccleston is also pretty underrated. To be fair, though, this was the only season offered on UMD, aside from some random one-off for Series 4, of all things. Anyway, these came as three 45-minute episodes on a single disc, aside from Volume 3, which has four episodes spread across two discs. Only a few TV shows were lucky enough to get an entire season on UMD, let alone more than one volume. So how would you play these? Well, the first thing to note is that while PSP games are region free, UMD Video does have region locking for most titles. Unfortunately, while my copies of Doctor Who and Interstellar 5555 are from Europe, they're both region free, and I have no idea which movies are region free and which aren't. Although I have heard that most titles released by Sony themselves are also region free. 
I even tried using custom firmware to change the region of my PSP so I could just use the US movie I already had to demonstrate the region locking, but that didn't work either, so unfortunately you'll just have to take my word for it, I guess. In addition, while normally you would have to keep the disc in the whole time, like with other media formats of the time, you can use custom firmware on your PSP to create an ISO file of the UMD and run that instead. It's what I've used to film most of the footage for this video, in fact. If you haven't already modded your PSP, I highly recommend it. The quality of UMD video is identical to that of DVD, being 720x480, and is almost always presented in widescreen. If it isn't, then it probably just wasn't made in widescreen to begin with. While the quality is downscaled to 480x272 on the PSP's built-in screen, PSP models 2000 and onward included AV output for watching UMD movies in full quality on the big screen. As for functionality and user experience, UMDs normally hold 1-4 to four trailers that play before you can access the main menu, either for movies that were in theaters at the time, or movies that are now available on UMD. As for the main menus themselves, they're just as functional as DVD, containing chapter selections and subtitle options, and sometimes one or two bonus features, aside from the option to watch the opening trailers again, which is not a bonus feature no matter how much studios think it is. I'm going to go ahead and compare the best and worst menus I saw from the selection of movies I bought. On the low end, we have National Treasure. Take a look at this menu, if you can even call it that. It just says play. It doesn't even say National Treasure on it anywhere. This could be the menu for any number of movies. Now compare that to the main menu for The Incredibles, which is designed to look like a computer interface. Easily the most stylized menu of the whole bunch and one that's unique from other releases of The Incredibles, unlike other UMD movies which usually just copy the DVD menu's layout. So why did it fail? Well, first off, UMDs hold much less information than DVDs, with 1.8 gigabytes being the UMD's maximum size compared to DVD's 4.5. Most UMD releases contain little to no special features due to this limitation. Despite this, UMD video releases were often sold at the same price as DVD, usually around $20 to $30. So imagine you walked into the local Best Buy wanting to get a fresh copy of The Incredibles. You could get it on UMD and watch it on the go, or get it on DVD and get additional bonus features for the same price. So obviously DVD is the better buy, right? Using an optical disc format killed the PSP's battery life, meaning the PSP could only run for about 4-5 to five hours or 2-3 to three movies max and it inherited the UMD's fragile casing problems as well. And arguably the most glaring flaw for any movie format, Sony never offered devices besides the PSP that could play UMD video. No UMD video Walkmans or UMD video players for your TV. The format itself was stuck on PSP. Plus, Sony lacked a lot of big name franchises on UMD. Star Wars, Jurassic Park, Indiana Jones, Back to the Future, Blade Runner, none of them were on UMD. To be fair, Sony still had a fair number of big franchises, but it wasn't enough. Studios pulled out pretty early on, and some studios, such as Disney, only released a few scattered titles here and there. UMD video became a sinking ship, one that no one wanted to hop aboard. It didn't take long for Sony to become the main publisher on the format, releasing pretty much anything they could. And that was before smartphones, iTunes, and streaming video made every portable media format, including UMD video, completely obsolete. Today, UMD video was more of a novelty than anything else, but back in its heyday, it was a format kind of ahead of its time, a truly portable, pocketable movie format. Sadly, it was limited by the system it was designed for, shackled to it, and it died alongside the PSP, becoming yet another failed Sony format. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed my little ramble about UMD video. I never see anyone talk about this format, and I wanted to give it some love. Hopefully you will too. Anyway, that's all I got for now. Thanks for watching.